The American Society of Human Genetics envisions a future where people everywhere realize the benefits of human genetics and genomics research. This year, we are excited to again bring you all the latest science in genetics and genomics, as well as insights on ASHG's diverse programs to unite and engage the community in new ways. This is the ASHG 2021 virtual meeting, and you're watching ASHG TV. Hello and welcome to ASHG TV and our third and final daily show from the ASHG 2021 virtual meeting. Today we will be featuring some of the new science and innovation in genetics and genomics. So in my opinion, the most exciting developments of the last year are advances in therapeutic genome editing. We've had genome editing technologies now for quite a few years, but this past year was really the year where it came into its own. But first, let's hear from Dr. Emily Davenport, co-chair of the Career Development Committee at ASHG, about some of the most exciting career paths in genetics and how the committee is inspiring the next generation of educators and mentors within the field. We have so much going on at ASHG for individuals thinking about their next career steps. So all year round, um, not just at the annual meeting, we have the Career Center at ashg.org. Tons of resources on the website, including interviews with people in different career positions, webinars and other digital resources if you want to learn about networking or what different types of positions are like or how to improve your resume, things like that. And if you are just getting started, um, what I hope you walk away with um, after coming to ASHG is that number one, you are not alone. Um, there are tons and tons of other people that are thinking about their careers, thinking about what they wanna do and thinking about you know, perfecting their resumes and their experience. I hope you also see that there are tons of tools at ASHG for, for doing that, um, both at the annual meeting and online. And then finally, I hope you get a sense of the diversity of things that you can do with a genetics degree you know, once you get there. Things that I think are particularly exciting right now, um, I'm biased, I do basic research, and I think it's always exciting to be learning something new. But in addition, um, policy right now is I think is a really active and exciting area to go into. As we learn more and more about genetics, we need to make sure that the government is you know, supporting genetics research and that we are implementing it societally in a way that makes sense and is ethical. Um, additionally, genetic counseling, I think, is something that's going to be increasingly valuable as we move forward. We are learning more and more about the genetic variants we have, and being able to talk to patients, talk to the general public, and impart our understanding of what genetics can and can't tell us is going to be super, super important going forward. It can be really easy to fall into the trap of thinking you're going to be just what you have you know, experience in or what you can see with the people around you. But there are so many different career opportunities that you might not have thought of. For example, in law or in the government or in private industry or even in fields that aren't even related to genetics but use genetic type skills and logic. So the more you can learn um, and the earlier you can and learn about those different career opportunities, the more flexibility you will have as you plan your career path. Up next, ASHG board members Dr. John Moran and Dr. Kieran Musanuru share their insights on some of the most exciting research happening in the field of genetics and genomics. First, though, let's head to Cambridge, United Kingdom, to take a look at Evenetics, the synthetic biology company developing a radically different approach to gene synthesis. Evenetics technology is based on a unique silicon chip-based approach to synthesis and error correction that enables long, accurate DNA preparation faster than ever before. Synthetic biology needs a way of making long, accurate DNA, and that's really difficult. Evenetics takes a completely different approach to the synthesis of DNA. We begin by synthesizing short fragments using our thermal control technology, which we then assemble into much longer fragments using a process that detects errors in the synthesized fragments and therefore allows us to construct much longer fragments automatically than by any other method. We use a process called dielectrophoresis where special electrodes on the chip trap DNA using an oscillating electric field and therefore minimizes losses as we transport the DNA. 
we had to choose the part of the synthetic cycle that we would control thermally and we determined that the five prime deprotection step was the area which would be most amenable to thermal control. So we have an opportunity really to revolutionise synthetic biology. We're going to be making a tool essentially which we can put into the hands of biologists. I believe that this is the unique way that uh, we will be able to synthesise long DNA fragments with uh, high fidelity. The Regeneron Genetics Center at Regeneron Pharmaceuticals focuses on early gene discovery and functional genomics. The primary goal of the RGC is to improve patient outcomes by identifying novel drug targets, clinical indications for development programs, and genomic biomarkers for pharmacogenomic applications. Let's find out more. The Regeneron Genetics Center, or the RGC as we call it, is our genetics discovery unit. We apply the best and latest technologies in sequencing and analytics to harness the power of human genetics to create game-changing new medicines. One thing I can tell you for certain is that genetics and genomic technologies are the absolute future of drug discovery and development. We are in a golden era of genomics technologies, which include RNA interference, CRISPR and gene editing, mRNA-based therapeutics and vaccines. We now have an avalanche coming of these new technologies, and they're absolutely increasing our ability to go after the best targets and to do it as fast as humanly possible. We've also unleashed these genetics studies, genomics technologies, and we are so rapidly uncovering the genes that are important for disease and that we can now go after and point these new technologies to hopefully cure many of these diseases. Now to Brisbane, Australia. Let's take a look at Genomica, a specialist in whole genome analysis and clinical reporting. The company is developing new whole genome genomics tests to discover new medicines for cancer and other rare diseases. Genomics can offer a wide range of new diagnostic and treatment options. This is why Genomica has a vision to bring whole genome-based diagnostics to patients around the world. We are unlocking whole genome data with our world-leading analysis techniques. John Pearson and I founded Genomica to basically take our research into whole genome analysis into patient care. Genomica's expertise is in whole genome analysis. If you have a whole genome sequence, we can unlock it for you. Genomica is developing two new human diagnostics. The first one is called CAPE-DX for cancer patients, and it's aimed at helping cancer patients and their medical oncologist to find the best drug for their cancer. The second product is called GOLF-DX, and it's aimed at helping people with hereditary diseases find the genomic cause of their disease. Because we look across the whole genome, we can help them avoid the diagnostic odyssey. You can find ASHGTV on the front page of the meeting platform where you can browse through the playlist to watch full-length versions of all the content featured in our daily show. We are also hosted on a dedicated page on the ASHG website and on our YouTube channel and Twitter. For the latest news and developments in human genetics and genomics, visit ashg.org. History will remember 2020 for its devastating death and suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic. But it will also be remembered for the unprecedented timeline of remarkable cooperation and scientific discovery. Let's hear from ASHG board members Dr. John Moran and Dr. Kiran Musanuru about how modern genetics and genomics will help us move forward in 2021 and beyond. I think one of the great genomic advances that have come up is the advances in long read DNA sequencing, be it PAC Bio or Oxford Nanopore technology, because it gives the ability to get long contiguous pieces of DNA assembled in one string, if you will. And I think that this advance is going to help assemble accurately the human genome and really tell us about my transposable element content, but 
but also will inform on differences in difficult to assemble structures in the human genome that can benefit genetics research. So in my opinion, the most exciting developments of the last year are advances in therapeutic genome editing. We've had genome editing technologies now for quite a few years, but this past year was really the year where it came into its own, where we actually see genome editing achieving therapeutic benefits in live breathing human beings and patients. Another aspect is the ability to actually put the genome editing tools into the human body and have it repair it from within. So to tie it to the coronavirus pandemic we're all suffering through right now, the vaccines that many of us have gotten were based on lipid nanoparticles delivering messenger RNAs for a protein expressed by the virus. Turns out that you're able to use the same exact technology, lipid nanoparticles, but instead of encoding a portion of the virus, encoding gene editors, and use that to deliver the editors directly into the livers of patients and make genetic changes that address disease. I think one of the, the most significant accomplishments that happened during this terrible pandemic was to leverage foundational knowledge gained by studying central dogma to arrive at effective therapeutic mRNA-based vaccines, and that the American Society of Human Genetics played a role, as did other scientific societies, at touting the power of those vaccines, the safety of those vaccines, and really informing the public to try and understand how getting these vaccinations was a tremendous advance against this various virus. And as we learn new things, a very important aspect is spreading that so that all the scientists in the world can take immediate advantage of that information. So even though I might not work on, say, coronaviruses, the work that I do in indirect ways informs how scientists who do work on coronaviruses were able to very quickly figure out what was going on when the pandemic began and uh, inform the development of vaccines. So that's just one example of how the information and knowledge sharing that is very much facilitated by the American Society of Human Genetics is playing a very positive role in our society. There are many different hats that we wear as part of the board of directors. And I've been continually impressed uh, by Mona Miller and the executive committee's ability to um, come up with educational programs to disseminate important knowledge to human genetic to the society, but also to the general scientific community. And I believe that knowledge is power but a lot of people won't realize that power until you disseminate effectively that knowledge to different constituencies. And I think that the American Society of Human Genetics through its new programs has done a fantastic job. Now let's head to Seattle to find out more about Nanostring Technologies, a pioneer in spatial biology and its mission to advance in the field of spatial multiomics. We started this program called the Spatial uh, Organ Atlas, where we actually take those key substructures, measure whole transcriptomes on them, and actually see what we discover. 
Spinal muscular atrophy is a debilitating and genetically complex disease which requires labs to provide a variety of genetic information quickly. Global diagnostics leader Assurigen is working to ensure labs can quickly provide comprehensive information on relevant genes. Spinal muscular atrophy is a recessive autosomal genetic disorder. There are a lot of risks if spinal muscular atrophy isn't detected early. In fact, uh, in type 1 SMA, infants lose 90% of their motor neurons by the time they're six months of age. And it's the leading genetic cause of infant death. It's very clear that you only have a few month window at the beginning of life to treat patients in order to have the optimal outcome. One you know, has to be able to diagnose the patient before they would necessarily come to clinical attention. The Amplidex SMN12 Plus kit is a really simple protocol that's PCR based and it can be completed in under four hours. And it covers all the information you need about both SMN1 and SMN2, including copy numbers, variants, and hybrid status. It really provides a nice, elegant, simple solution to a very complex workflow. COVID-19 has cast a long shadow over the world with the long-term effects of COVID-19 on human health still unknown. Using world-leading expertise in epidemiology, genetics and public health, Imperial College London is leading REACT LC, a study to better understand the causes and possible treatments for long COVID. I started feeling tired a lot like really tired. It was to the point where I really couldn't even get out of bed some days. It's really important to understand the long-term consequences of infection with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. We set up the long COVID program, which we call REACT-LC. We're trying to measure the experience of people with long COVID and who've not got long COVID. We're sending out a survey. We're interviewing in depth. We're bringing people up for biological testing. If we can understand the particular biological mechanisms, whether that's inflammation or whether that's the virus still replicating, that will allow us to target specific treatments. We're reading almost the entirety of the genome. We can use that biology to incept a much better outcome for people with long COVID. This virus is not going away. We now know how to monitor that virus at scale. I think those kinds of tests will carry on now for, for years to come. Well, that's all from us here at ASHG TV for another fantastic year of the ASHG annual meeting, bringing you the latest cutting edge research and science in genetics and genomics. If you missed any of the content, you can always find us on the front page of the meeting platform and on our YouTube channel and Twitter feed. Thank you to all of our guests and, of course, all of our viewers who tuned in to watch the show. We hope you will join us again next year, hopefully in person in Los Angeles. Until then, goodbye.